Hej og velkommen til Hobby Motor. Videoen i dag øh, er noget jeg laver på opfordring, for jeg blev bedt om at lave en kædesavsreparation på engelsk. Så øh, videoen i dag fra nu her, den foregår på engelsk. Hvis det driller jer og I synes det er træls, øh, prøv at se om I kan sætte undertekster på. Det, det hjælper nogle gange at, 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 at det kan lade sig gøres. Ellers, øh, ja, så, så må I snuppe en af de andre kædesavsvideoer jeg har. Så øh, jeg, jeg løfter et, øh, et ønske fra en, 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 en god ven, og, øh, og han taler kun engelsk. Så here it goes. William, friend, this one is for you. You asked for one in English, and uh, here it is. We got a uh, Steel 018, an older saw, which has an oiling problem. Um, it does not deliver enough oil uh, to the bar, and... Um, From experience, that's either the worm gear that's defect for driving the pump. It can be the pump itself, or there is either a clog in the uh, in the oil pickup, or something is wrong with the uh, the rubber hosing from from the oil tank into the pump. So uh, let's see if we can either make a diagnosis or at least confirm deny as we go what is working, what's not working. The uh, first thing I want to do is I want to take the cover off here. Get a magnetic tray so we can keep track of all our parts. Take the bar and chain off. Here we have the oil outlet. Um, I'm going to start up the saw and uh, let you see that there isn't much coming up. Just need my safety glasses and ear protection. As you can see, there isn't a lot coming out. So uh, let's uh, let's get into this and let's we can do that one there. See if we can prop this up with a piece of wood. Let's check the worm gear first. It's driven by the uh, the clutch drum. So uh, let's see here, small screwdriver, C clip. Careful, C clip might tend to want to disappear on you. We've got a washer, we got the drum, we got the needle bearing and we need to take out the uh, the clutch. Let's see what size that is. Too small. Perfect, it's a 19 millimeter. In order not to ruin anything We want to access the plug and put in a piston stop. A little hot. There we go. Mm, piston stop, piston stop. Let's see. I have these plastic piston stops from steel, which are quite nice actually. You simply jam them in. Let me see where we there we are. Jam them in here. See, that was not how it is supposed to go. <laughs> there we go, I think. There, yes. Clutch is righty loosey, lefty tidy. So uh, I'm going to use my Milwaukee Impact for this. Let's see if we can if we can get this loose. Don't do that, please. These can sometimes be a pain to get installed. There we go. I think. Oh yeah, and Steve? Yes. 
the little Milwaukee will take out the clutch. Clutch comes off, and the piston stop. And here we have the worm driver or worm gear. It's not, well, well it is a gear, but uh, see if we can take this out here. And uh, what we want to inspect are the threads in this, that they are okay, that this thing doesn't move on the uh, on the gear itself. And this one here seems to be in fairly good order. Okay, we can if we look closely, and I assume you guys a bit. I hope. There. We can just about make out the. Uh, no, we can't. You can't see a thing. Right in there is the little pump. That's the one we're after. Together with this here. This is the uh, oil line. But in order to get to that, we need to get this whole handle off. To get this whole handle off, we need to. Dismount the uh, linkage to the uh, carburetor because we need to take, I believe, something off here. At least that's what the manual says. Okay, let's uh, let's get into that. We need an eight millimeter nut driver. Let me just take out the uh, the air filter. There, put that to the side. In here. You guys are still up close, so you can't see a thing. Sorry about that. We have two 8mm nuts in here. Now, goodbye, it said. Hmm. See if we can't get you back. There you are. Thank you. I'm just going to take another magnetic tray for the carburetor stuff. Let's see, we got another one here. There we go. The old intake, air, air intake box comes off housing. Now we need to take off the uh, the throttle uh, linkage. I'm going to show you how to do that but I will get the camera on another stand so uh, you have a better chance of, of seeing everything. I hope you're able to see this. This is the, the throttle arm and the throttle mechanism and the way to remove this is a heck of a lot easier than this putting it together but you depress the throttle and then you Put a finger on this tap here, make it go back, and let go of the, and it's free. Now, to get it, I would take it all the way out here to, to get it out of the handle. Just depress the handle, and then you simply turn this 90 degrees, and it comes out. Goes in the same way, there's a little hole in a, in a plastic notch in here, and uh, yeah. That's how we get it out. As I said, it's a lot easier than... How you get it in. Um, just to secure the carburetor we are not... I don't think so. We're not going to take off the carburetor. What I will do is I will depress the, uh, the choke so I minimize the chance of dirt getting in there. I'll simply put in this nut here just to secure the carburetor in case I flip the saw. Like that. There we go. Like that. Also, I will put in the spark plug. I can't remember if we need to go on this side here, but we, we'll get to that shortly. Now, we need to take off uh, the cross member here, or the bar, handlebar. We got three points here, here, and here. Can't remember if I, if I, you guys can't see it diddly. Sorry about that. We have three plastic plugs here uh, that we need to take out and um, there's a screw behind it and um, yeah to get this handlebar off 
in order to access our pump and and, and the oil line. Um, how to do this? Normally, best done with a couple of screwdrivers. Normally, there we go. Ugh, come on, shit still, please. There we go. One. Do you know where these things that you drop always go? You know, furthest corner behind something. That one just did. So I'll have to see if I can find that off camera. Comes another one. There. And last one. Come on, sweetie. There we go. So, in here we have nothing. I thought there were screws in here, but now remember, there's not. There's only the the rubber grommet or or vibration rubber thing that goes in here. But with a screwdriver, carefully, you should be able to. Let me see. Yes. You should be able to push this through. Do I need to take this off? I oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Hmm. I can't remember if I need to take this off to get at something. But uh, well, we'll see. Let's try this out here. Let's see if we can't push this one through. Sorry, my arm's side in the way, but there was one. And this one here. Hmm. I want to try this one here first. I don't stab myself. And by the way, it is fairly easy to ruin these rubber things. Mm -hmm. Can we get at it from this side? Probably not. No. Maybe if we start it here. And then... Yes, sir. There it went. There it goes. And now the final one. Let's see if we can. There we go. Ta -da. So, what's happening now? How much will come off? How much will not? There we go. Should be able to. Uh, note to self, does not need to take this apart. Alrighty, let's have a look at the bottom here. What we have here is the... Uh, just behind this one here, we have the, um, the oil pump. And this here transfers oil from the pump, I'm oh, sorry, from the oil reservoir which is in here through here, through the pump, and up. So, this one here should be fairly easy to to take out. There it comes. Yes. And also, from in here, I know you can't see a whole lot. It's, um, it's kind of tucked away in there. Let's see if we can remove some of the grime and dirt here. I just remember something. Do you think it's a good idea to drain the oil out of uh, the machine? I do. Let's do that. A 
otherwise we're going to make be making a mess. Can you guys see anything? No. There we go. Just pouring out the oil. At least as much of it as possible. I'll put this one here back in. Put this aside. And get back here. Now, it's a heck of a lot easier if I show you after it's out. So I'm just gonna stab at it here. Try to get it to come out. Come on, honey. Thank you. Here it comes. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Here comes the pickup as well. So, hmm, have a look at that. To me, that definitely looks like a kink. You see that? It's like that. There's a kink in it. Huh. Could that be, if it's sitting, if it's sitting in the tank like this, and I did notice when I looked in the tank, I couldn't see the pickup, because I would, imagine that the pickup would be lying something in the area like like this so that you can see it at the bottom of the oil tank but this kink here is definitely not healthy hmm pickup looks good and there isn't that much oil spillage here so it must have been quite uh, hmm to, hmm, hmm, you know, one of those, how to proceed, how much money to spend, hmm, hmm, tell you what, let's take the, uh, the oil pump out and, uh, let's give that an, ex an, an, in an inspection. Okay, take the pump out, you need a 5 millimeter bolt or screw, M5, and you simply screw it into the bottom of the oil pump just with your finger you don't need to, you shouldn't hand tighten it with a tool just with your fingers and then something with a little leverage and out comes our oil pump here it is hmm I don't know. It has a little, it slips a little this way, like in play, but on the, uh, the other way, there's nothing. It's perfectly okay to have in play this way, but, hmm, hmm, what to do, what to do. I tell you what, since it's such a pain <laughs> to take off, the handlebar, you have to clutch out and carburetor and stuff. We're going to change this. Um, they don't cost a whole lot, and um, it's cheaper to replace this and the fuel line. Oh, sorry, the uh, the hose here than it is to replace a bar that runs hot because it doesn't get sufficient lubrication. Okay, let me uh, let me go order some parts, and uh, for you that'll just be a second. But uh, for me, probably a couple of days. But uh, see you real soon. Okay, I got my parts ordered. Uh, if you're not used to working on chainsaws or small engines and you want to try it out, when you, uh, when you go and, um, and order parts, you go to your steel dealer, you have to tell them something. Like, what's the model number? On steels up here on the handle you will see the uh, model number here 018 and then it's there's always a a, uh, a year code here in 1999 this is when this was made with that in hand you can, uh, you can go to your steel dealer and say I want a I want a new oil pump I want a new pickup oil filter thing I want the oil hose and they can look it up and, and get it for you. 
Uh, it can be a little tricky to find parts based on on the uh, the parts lists uh, or diagrams you can find online because still have a tendency to have more versions of a 018. Um, if you're working on a saw that is not yours, I've seen people come in with with this sticker here that that says the model number, but it's not the correct model number, and the 017 and the 018, which is just about the same as the MS-170 and the MS-180. It can be very difficult to tell them apart if, if these numbers are not there. So, uh, yeah, trust no one. Uh, this repair we're doing here today will work for the 017 and, this, of course, this one, the 018. It will also work for the MS-170 and the uh, MS-180. They are very, very similar in, in, in setup. Um, but before I shut you guys down and patiently wait for my parts to arrive, I'm just gonna. I was looking into the oil tank and there is some uh, some yuckiness in there, and uh, I want to flush that out, or at least try to flush it out. Now that I have this one here out, it's not a good idea to use any pressurized air in the oil tank while this is attached because it it can blow it out. So. Uh, now we have the opportunity to get things cleaned. Let's uh, let's use it. I use regular brake clean. Uh, you can use WD-40 or whatever solvent you might have. Gasoline will actually do it as well. This is just convenient to use. And I simply spray some in here. And you'll see that it's coming out here at the bottom because we don't have the hoses and stuff in. in there but okay and then we can introduce a little air it's gonna make a noise guys and uh, use what set of these because this stuff gets everywhere Brand new in there, brand new. Let's just get rid of this paper stuff here. Sticks. There we go. Okay, um, I'm gonna put all this stuff here in a box, set it aside. I don't know how long it takes for these parts to get here. Could be a couple of days, could be a week. Sometimes these days it can be two weeks. Um, so to keep everything together, I usually put it in a, a plastic box, um, like. Go get one just like this one here, and uh, it simply allows me to have everything together. There we go, I'll put that in there. This one in here. What else do we have? We oh, yeah. have, sorry about that, we had the intake. The cover plate and clutch drum goes there, air filter goes there, and our barn chain goes there. Cover, there we go. Also, for this one, I'll show you when it gets here. I actually ordered one of these, one of these uh, locking things because this one has, it's gone, it's worn, I guess. It keeps falling down and the whole cover comes loose. So now that I have it apart, I might as well get that fixed. Guys, see you when the parts arrive. Okay, our parts has arrived. That only took close to two weeks. Jeez, it's quite amazing these days. But uh, what it does, it allows us to continue on our chainsaw. And uh, <coughs> this is the box. <coughs> of all the parts. Let me get that 
unpacked and I think I'll get you guys up on the bench in another tripod so you, uh, you'll have a hopefully a little better view of, of what's happening. Okay, um, um, <clears throat> before we open up the new parts, I don't know if you remember when we, when we took this apart, I was actually, I mean this this oil line here has a kink in it. it it's difficult to show on camera but it has a definite kink here and to be honest that is most likely my fault uh, when installing this yeah, a couple of years maybe three maybe four years ago um, so, so the the oil line has been like this inside the oil tank and and thereby restricting oil flow um, the the repair would normally not include the filter and a new oil pump but since it is so difficult to get to these this hose and the uh, air and the uh, oil pump I've decided to uh, while we in here we might as well replace it cost wise it is not that bad uh, Minor parts like this from for, for steels are normally not that expensive. Um, parts numbers here, rip, where are you? There you are. This is the uh, oil pickup or the oil filter. Uh, oil hose, it's got this number here. You see what I can see if I can see what you can see. There we go. Um, the oil pump itself. Just like this and uh, by the way for, in terms of oil pumps uh, you can get two kinds for this chainsaw you can get what's called a 0.55 millimeter or a 0.65 and it has to do with the amount of oil that the pump delivers I decided to go back to the oh not go back to to keep going with the standard 0.55 that's what the machine is delivered with when it's new and that is the same one as, as our old one here Again, is it necessary to change it? No, it's not. The old one is not that worn, but again, it's a hassle to get in here, so I kind of want to avoid having to do this again soon in the future. This is a knob for the uh, cover. We'll get back to this. It's not directly related to, to this fix. Okay, let's see if we can get, first of all, let's see if we can get you into view. What's going to happen here is that here is our hole that goes into the oil tank. So this one here will be put in the oil tank and it will, it will, um, let's see, no, I am so sorry. This is the hole where, where the, uh, the oil hose goes in with a pickup. It's got a, uh, a ridge here that will go in and lock itself in here. This part will go down here, which is basically right on top of the oil pump, which will go in like this. So oil gets sucked from the uh, oil tank through this and out to the bar. So that's the, uh, that's the sequence. Mm -hmm. Where are we? There you are. I hope you got that. Otherwise, Follow along, it'll be fine. Let's see here, let's open up this one here. That is our hose. For this hose, we need a new oil filter. Let me back you guys out a bit. Sorry about that. That's the oil filter. Oil filter goes into this end here. And make sure it is seated all the way down against the flange of the um, of the oil pickup. There we go. That was that. That was that. Then we need an oil pump. And here it is. And again, as I said, these two. They, they, there isn't any way on this one, but uh, okay. Now comes the uh, the part where you can really screw up if you don't know. And luckily we know. Let me show you this one here. I'm going to zoom in.
Can you see the little notch that's in there in that area here? That represents where are we where are we there we go. Let's see if we can get some focus. Focus. That represents the notch at the back of our oil pump. So when we install our oil pump, it needs to be like this. So it represents this. It goes in here, but oh yeah, yeah, get back here. But it has to be orientated so that this notch is is in the same position as it as it is in in this hole here. This here is not for the pump. It doesn't go in there. It goes over here. Steel just decided to show it here. So we're going to use our installation tool, which is simply a an M5 or five millimeter bolt. Just going to screw this in here. And to help things out, I usually I just use a little bit of uh, chain and bar oil. Uh, doesn't take much. Just have that here and a finger. I'm simply just trying to make this go in as easy as possible. Here's our slot. It goes in like this. And then we simply push it down. All the way. And again, we should just be able to see it right here. And uh, just do, don't, don't hammer this in. Don't use any tools. Just your thumb. And make sure it's seated all the way. Good. Installation tool out. And then our new hose here. Now, this time I'm going to make sure I get it right. So when I stick this in here, I'm going to make sure I'm going to go back in the tank here over here and look in and see that it's located correctly. Before we put this in, again, I simply use just a little bit of bar and chain oil. Here and also here. There we go. I think I spilled some here. Yes, Bruce, I spill stuff too. Yep, there we go. So, in with this one. And it has to be orientated like this. Now this can be a bit of a pain uh, to get in, but, 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 it usually works. You simply use your fingers. Try, uh, I may have to use a tool, it depends on how it goes, but if you can avoid using a tool here, do that because it is so easy to tear this. Just gonna try and get a little purchase here and then come on. It'd be nice if I had thinner fingers, but I don't. There we go. I think it went in. Just need to get that little snip in there. Yep. You can kind of feel it when it seats. It, it just goes in and and then it stops, you can't push it anymore. So, let me just double check that we can actually see it now, that it's not, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna go in there. There we go. Flashlight, flashlight, no flashlight, flashlight here. Actually, I can't see it. That is weird. Just shaking it a bit. Hmm. That is weird. I was expecting to just see the tip of it, that it comes in here and sit here, but it doesn't. Hmm. Let's get a little extraction tool going. Let's see if we have it here. Let's just try and see if we can get it to poke out here. Mm. Mm. Strange. Let's try.
try the non-OEM tool. Guys, let me fiddle around with this a bit. I'll be right back. Okay, a little fishing with a piece of wire and I hope camera can pick this up try and illuminate it in there I hope you can see the oil pickup or the filter and you want to be able to see the filter in the tank that was my mistake the last time I um, it's supposed to be stretched out like this but again I had that issue that it was most likely in a lo located something like this and that restricted the, uh, the oil flow so you want to be able to see the uh, the filter in the tank. Alrighty. So, assembly, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Yep. Let's uh, let's get the handle. Yeah, I think so. Let's get the handle on first. I've got the bar over here. Um, the rubber mounts. There's two here and one here. I'm just going to give them a little bit of WD-40. You can use whatever oil you have. Silicone will do as well. I just had WD-40. Simply to lubricate it and to facilitate this going back into place. So, it goes in like this. Yep. Fairly well seated there. I'm going to start down here, I think, I hope, am I, am I not, I'm telling you, this can be very fiddly, oh, hold on, we almost forgot something, ah, you guys could have warned me, couldn't you, this one, very very easy you simply place it over the hole and push it in it doesn't take a lot of force don't use a screwdriver here guys simply push it in and then <coughs> uh, let's look at the old one you can see you have a, a square surface here the edges here you want to make sure that they are tucked under this white plastic here. For that, it's perfectly okay to use a screwdriver. Just make sure it's in there. See if we can orientate it a little better. Like this. Yep. It could actually need, it needs a little bit of a twist here. Yeah, there we go. Spot on. Yeah, just make sure it's pushed in. It it doesn't have the same big ridge as it did in here, but here it just pushes in and that's it. Nothing else. Now we can go back to the uh, the handle. Okay, let's see if this will cooperate this time around. <clears throat> I was amazed at how fiddly this can be. Let me see, I had a specialty tool here. This is a an heirloom. I inherited this from my granddad and it's a really old screwdriver and it's really dull. This is perfect for this. in frame just need to get this tucked in, tucked in. 
like that. Last one. Where's the last one? It's up here. There we go. And there we go. We have this one here. There we go. And this one here. Come on. Jeez. There we go. When they're in place, they'll flush here um, with the, well, the, the the engine cover here, but also the engine frame here, but also the, the handle frame. So it's fairly flush. But they just need that little push. Good. Uh, what else do we need? Might as well put in these little clips here. that okay let's get our clutch in I just need to go get some grease and some degreaser just a sec so let's see what we've got here we got the clutch drum what I'm basically going to do here is I'm just going to make sure that none of my greasy fingers got on this if they did Make sure they are sufficiently degreased. There we go. And then, just for good measure, we'll do the uh, clutch as well. Okay, so, oh, sit. Maybe we need a block of wood here. Something like that, something like that. There we go. You guys in frame? Yep. First thing is our worm gear here. And it simply slides in. Sometimes you have to wiggle it a little, but see here before we do that let me just since, since I degreased all of this I'm just gonna grease this a little bit what I'm using here is it's steels multi lube which is for I think it's well, on the picture here it says the uh, sprocket on chainsaw and uh, the gearbox on a hedge cutter so I guess this is Perfect for this. Here we go. Alrighty, in you go. Next, we have our needle bearing here. And again, you want to make sure that is packed full of grease. And uh, this one I do change so this is one of those items that I see very often that people don't. They don't manage to get the clutch off to, to lubricate this needle bearing. I mean, the needle bearing costs absolutely nothing, but if it, if, it, if it breaks, it may destroy the drum. And the drum does cost a little bit of money, so uh, it's a good idea to, once in a while during the season, to take this apart and then clean it and then lube up this needle bearing. There we go. No? Yes? No? Yes? No? What? Does this go in first? Let's have it. Hold on. No, it doesn't. We actually... I'm getting ahead of myself here. We actually need to put in the clutch first. Alrighty. Clutch is not marked inside and outside, but the... Uh, the nut here in the middle, it's raised on this side, not so much on this side. The raised side is facing out. And remember this is lefty tidy, right? There we 
go. Now we need to tighten this, but I really don't want to use my impact for this. And the main reason for not wanting to use the impact for this is that on the other side of the main shaft of the engine, we have the flywheel. The flywheel has a little key in it. If you rattle this too much, you may break the key over here. And the key is integrated into the flywheel. So if you break the key, you also need a new flywheel. So uh, we're trying not to do that. I'm just going to pull on the cord here just to pick up some of this. Just give it a little bit of slack. And then I'm going to hand tighten this. There we go. There we go. Do I really need to? Yeah, I do. Let me get a piston stuck. Be right back. I forgot about that. Piston stop goes in. And let's see here. We want to turn it this way. Okay. Piston stop is engaged. And I'm just going to. I'm not going to go nuts. I'm just going to make sure it is fairly tight. It is self tightening because you have a left hand thread, engine runs forward or clockwise, so uh, it will tighten itself. Now we can do our little needle bearing. There we go. And <coughs> a clutch drum. This particular model here has a little notch here. And, and I hope we can see this. Otherwise, I might need an extra lamp, which is over here. Sorry about that, guys. And then flip the screen so you guys, so I can see what you guys are seeing. Zoom a little bit. Where's the bugger? Is it gone? No, it's not. There it is. I hope you can see it right down there. See that little notch? That's part of the uh, the worm gear. Um, that worm gear is driven by. Let's zoom out here. The clutch drum. So this little notch engages with that little piece of the worm gear that sticks up. So let's see here if we can catch it. The uh, clutch drum also have uh, a mark here, which corresponds with this little notch just to help you aim this. Just gonna release the brake here. Where are we? There we are. Did we get it? Yeah, we did. Alrighty. We now have on these cupped washers goes here and this little c-clip e-clip whatever it's called be careful they tend to want to get away from you and it's one of those things if it lands on the shop floor it's gone forever okay clutch drum is in that's good put the cap on the grease here and put in the spark plug. By the way, how's that looking? Rather nice, actually. I found that um, when you run premix, you know that alkylate gasoline, aspen, tri-fuel, VP, whatever it's called around the world. The spark plugs tends to run at a slightly lighter color. Um, regular homemade mixed gas, they tend to run a little light brownish. But with the uh, the premix, uh, it's all 40 to 1 in this one. 50 to 1, sorry, 50 to 1. Um, they tend to run a little lighter in color. So uh, there's a difference somewhere. Now. We need 
throttle. And throttle, holy moly, this can get difficult. Hmm, let's see, where are we? There we are. Is it? This is it? No, that's not it. This is it. It goes in like this. Hope you can see that. Let me zoom a bit. So, there we go. So, first thing I'm going to do, I think, is to put it in. And what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm depressing the uh, throttle. So, this sticks out. And then this here twists in here. It's supposed to twist in here. There we go. And that was the wrong way. Way to go, class. There we go. Let's try this here instead. There we go. That's much better. Now, we, since this comes here, wow, does it have to go under? No. Does it? I think it has to go under. Yeah, it has to go under this here. Don't mess with this if you can avoid it. They break very, very easily. So, let's see what we can do here. Can we get that in here some way? No. Well, that, no. Hmm. Tell you what. Let me con go consult a, uh, a parts list. Okay. The steel master plan says it goes in like this. So, we still depress the trigger here. Get this hooked in like this. Get it orientated down here. Let's see, let's, mm -hmm. yeah. Now we're talking. Now the trick is, and, and this might be a bit difficult for you guys to see, but here you have the throttle lever thing from the carburetor and this one here has to go in just about oh sorry I just hit butted you guys there that's not nice let's see if we can get that to come in there hmm hold on we may have to release that back in there would that do the trick no yes no no mm, I'm telling you this is fiddly but now it's there let me just zoom in real tight three four I hope you can see here that the the curve on the throttle shaft arm here is in this groove in the carburetor. So when I depress this, yeah, that's the right way. Okay, we put in one of the carburetor eight millimeter bolts. You know what people always say? Uh, it's because I'm watching this YouTube thing. I don't know if you guys heard about it. It's pretty nifty. But they say that 8mm and 5 16th is the same. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same, but it is very close. Hmm. Good one. Yeah, this YouTube thing. I'm not sure it's going to catch on. It's just a fad. Get this one out here. There we go. Oh, by the way, you guys using nut uh, drivers like this? These are from Vera. Uh, the really nice thing about these is, is that they are hollow. So if you have a long studded bolt, well, you can have the stud as long as the handle here because that's how long this thing is. So it's hollow inside. That's quite nifty in, in some cases. Okay. Gonna mount the airbox assembly. Just a sec. Just give this a little bit of air just to make sure it's clean. There we go. <coughs> Put 
வச்சிடலாம் put the choke lever stop lever down yeah if if you uh, if you ever worked on these before you probably heard or experienced i hope not that if you start messing with this shaft here this is the one that controls the stop uh, the choke uh, function on the saw if you start messing with this it is very very easy to break this little piece of plastic here, the, the, the white piece of plastic, and that white piece of plastic is part of the whole assembly. So you break that, unless you're able to fix it, you need a whole new assembly. And these little saws, I don't think they're worth it, um, unless you're doing a project for yourself. They are, yeah, you got to be real careful guys, if you if you want to mess with that shaft. If you can avoid it, do that. At least that's, that's what I try to do. These, yeah, of course they have to be tight, but don't go nuts here. <laughs> nuts. Yeah. Don't tighten them too much. Okay, what else, what else, what else? We have an air filter which is, well, it, it's hard to argue, but because this is a saw from 1999, so, so it's what, 22 years old or something? 21, 22 years old. Um, so you can't say it's not working, but honestly, this filter here looks a little flimsy to me, compared to some of the other steel saws. But then again, this is, uh, this is one of their, basic source, small source. Okay, that went there. What else do we need? Yes, we actually do need one thing. And I have never done that before. The last part I had over here was a new knob. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or, but my issue is that when this is on, on the saw in a locked position, when it's running, this thing keeps falling down and that would loosen the cover here so we have to find a way to see if we can get this one here out and I've never done this before so a little I don't want to break anything hmm. do we just take it from out here Slightly bigger screwdriver needed. Just a sec. Oh yeah. There we go. There we go. Just like that. Put the new one in. If this doesn't help, well. We know that it's the casing, there's something wrong with that, but it's... What? What? Nope, it's not going in that way. We have, if you can see, you got these two ears here, and we got the two dogs on this one, and... They are supposed to go in there, but this thing here is not cooperating. There we go. Bingo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice and tight. Good one. Good one. So, cover on. Locked, nice and tight, or chain. There we go. Bar and chain. I do believe, what was this? This is, it was upside down. And when I say upside down, I mean 
the lettering on the bar was upside down. It's a good practice to flip your bar every once in a while um, simply to ensure an even wear on the bar. And, uh, they are they're not super expensive the bars but then again if you can make them last twice as long price goes down by half doesn't it. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Loosen this up. I know you guys can't see the thing. Sorry about that. Can I put you over here? That's better. There we go. There we go. Okay. Put this down here. That chain is not in the right position. Now the chain is in the right position. There we go. Uh, we need a cover here. This one. Move that away. Up to the side. And I think. here. Now this saw is so old it's, it doesn't have one of these you know from the front features on on how to to tension your 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 chain. So that happens from back here. There's a screw back here. Ah, there it is. You turn that clockwise it tensions the uh, chain and anti-clockwise it loosens it. I'm just gonna just gonna get it sort of in the ballpark here, something like that, and then I'm gonna lift up in my uh, in the in the bar because it tends to get the chain a little looser. Just a tad more. my wrench there it is so pick up the bar and tension these two nuts here how's that it's good I mean you can find people saying that oh you're not supposed to see the dogs here you can't pull it up blah, blah, blah. guys this is how I sometimes do it sometimes it's a little tighter I don't I don't use a saw like this for a living I just try to fix them from time to time so people uh, anyway this is actually a fairly new chain so it'll stretch anyway so after a few cuts you most likely have to uh, to tension it again so let's get some oil in this thing and some gasoline and I need a funnel. Here we go. Funnel over here. Funnel goes in there. There was once when steel when they delivered their uh, their containers that they had one of those pull-out sprouts. I guess somebody 
decided that that was too expensive, so we can't get that anymore. Other than that, I'm using a synthetic plus synth plus from Steel. This is really really nice chain oil uh, or bar oil. It's uh, it's a little it looks thin, but it does not mean that the saw is using more oil due to this. Uh, in the winter, this one will stay liquid a lot longer than some of the cheaper stuff, and uh, yeah. So let's put some of this in. You guys still can't see anything. Just yell when you can't see anything. Just say the word. I'll fix it. Uh, very, very close to fall. Very close to fall. Alrighty. <laughs> like two. Too, too close to fall, Jesus. <laughs> Look at this. Let me just uh, <clears throat> do a little quick oil removal thing here. There we go. Let's have the uh, Y'all cap here. This thing is one of those the old style. You know the style that never leaks. There we go. And you go and there we go. Gasoline. There. This one here. Uh, I'm going to take this out because I just wanted to check that. Uh, but, come on, sweetie. There you go, thank you. I just want to make sure since my last time I did anything with rubber hoses, it didn't go too well because we. You know, the kink was, was created by me. I will happily admit that. Let's just see if we got stuff down here. It doesn't look like it. It's about half full of fuel. That fuel is... A, hmm. Let's see, I used this in the spring, so... Seven? Seven? Eight, seven, six, seven months old. Um, but it's some of that good stuff from uh, from steel. It's called uh, Moto Mix. It's premix, fifty to one, and it has no issues with being in the saw uh, for, for that long. Now, I don't expect to have to adjust the engine on this because we did not touch the. Uh, carburetor um, so I'll expect it just to start up and uh, once it does we need to check if the new oil hose and oil pump is delivering oil to the uh, chain for that I'll need a piece of cardboard I'll put up here I'll put you guys in another stand we'll start it up and we'll see if we can get it to to indicate that that oil is being pumped up to the uh, to the chain and the bar okay PPE glasses and earmuffs I'm inside the shop today I don't have anything open so all the sound will stay in here plus it's uh, just about 7:30 at night so uh, I don't want to rest this thing up outside because I'll startle all my neighbors so uh, let's see what happens here guys Here, sweetie.
absolutely perfect. I could not get it to do that before. Now it delivers a nice line of oil and uh, yeah actually I do need to, sh I need to I do need to tension the chain. It did get a little loose there. Um, no this is just exactly what I was hoping for. This was the reason why we did this repair because uh, I could not get it to do that uh, the last time I used it and uh, with insufficient oil in, on a bar and chain it just wears out incredibly fast so I'm happy. I would like to, I, don't, I can't remember if I mentioned it once but the, uh, the oil pump it comes in two versions. Uh, I, did, I did mention that, I'm sorry. It does come in two versions. Again, um, I can't remember what this version here is because it's not stamped with a number. Um, the one I put in is the standard one, the 055 millimeter, or the normal flow uh, oil pump. And it looks like it delivers uh, just as expected. Okay guys, um, William, you were asking for this in, in English and uh, buddy, here it is, chainsaw steel 018. This repair will go for the, what was it, 017, 018, MS170 and MS180. Um, replacement of oil line and oil pump. And uh, a little warning about, sorry about that, about kinking it when you're putting it uh, in the tank. I did kink it when I put it in here the first time, that's why I had to fish for it. But we found it, it's in the oil, it delivers good stuff. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, for my Danish viewers, I'm sorry this time, uh, but sometimes you just got to honor a, a good, solid and fair request. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. I hope that if you do not subscribe to Hobby Motor, that you will start doing that if you enjoyed this video. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. You guys know more about that than I do. Questions? Yes, please bring them on. Uh, if I can answer, I will. Um, other than that, until I see you next time, take care. Oh yeah, and uh, this is how my workbench looks after the installation of the parts today. So. <laughs> I think I will take the Bruce Pender prescription and spend 12-15 minutes to clean this up. Take care guys.